Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on this sticky note called pulse pressure. The cardiac you should know. The sticky note can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, and nursingcamp.com where you can download this, especially on Pinterest. Okay, um, pulse pressure, why do we measure it? All right, well, a normal blood pressure is 120 on 80, and that's normal. And if you subtract the uh, diastolic minus, which is the diastolic is the bottom, minus the systolic, you get 40, and that's a normal pulse pressure. Okay, So normal pulse pressures are usually about blood, and a decrease of pulse pressure is usually a result of bleeding or heart failure. We're going to go a little bit more into that, but basically bleeding or heart failure will give you a decreased pulse pressure, less than 40. Uh, increased pulse pressure is greater than 40, and we see that a lot of times with neuro patients. So it's called widening pulse, pulse pressure. In neuro patients, um, that's a sign called Cushing's triad. And that cover that in my neuro lectures. Okay, so let's go to low. Low is uh, less than 25. That's really uh, acute. And I'm bleeding. Or aortic stenosis. So you have the valves. And location, you know, is tri pulling my aorta, so tricuspid is the first, then pulmonic, the blood comes in from the lungs, and that's the uh, mitral, and aortic. Well, we're talking about aortic stenosis. And aortic stenosis is that it's really clamped down, and it can't quite get out. And that will cause a decrease of this uh, uh, pulse pressure because it can't quite fill and expel out of the heart. And that stenosis is the cause. Chronic over time, it's going to cause heart failure. And then that's going to cause shortness of breath, walking up stairs. Okay. Next thing is high, greater than 40. Well, atherosclerosis is the main cause. And the reason that that's the main cause is when you're looking at peripheral vascular disease and atherosclerosis and around the heart, those coronary arteries are thin, right? And the blood's having difficulty going through it. And so it's causing a, a widening of the pressure, the, the, the difference between systolic and diastolic. And the reason it starts to widen is because of this pressure. Then also aortic regurg, so the valves again, tricuspid, pulmonic, mitral, aortic. Where previously we talked about it's clamped down as in stenosis and regurg, it, there's something wrong with the valve. It might be calcified, and it's not fully closed, so it regurges back, it swishes back and forth, which actually caused some modeling on the uh, ventricle like hypertrophy or um, mainly hypertrophy, which means big trophy hearts. The heart gets really, really big. The muscle gets thick. Well, that's going to cause a problem. It's going to increase that um, thing, the uh, pulse pressure, as well as uh, fever. And fever is because of uh, dilation and also the increase of a heart rate. And, jeez. Sorry about that. And the increase of the heart rate. Well, that's about it. It's just a little thing on pulse pressure. And when you're looking at pulse pressure, you know, mainly bleeding. Uh, so narrowing pulse pressure is bleeding. Um, but chronic would be aortic stenosis. Um, it's interesting to see if you have a patient with aortic stenosis. Um, and also uh, aortic regurg. So mainly in the aortic valve will affect pulse pressure. Um, 
that's about it. My name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp, and I'm just covering hemodynamics, and this I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, Twitter, and nursingcamp.com. That's it for me, Nurse on, and we'll see you next time.